Hi Floss Tube, this is Lisa Smith, Kindred Stitcher. Today is September 2nd, 2023, and this is video 106. Welcome to my channel. This is a channel about cross stitch and needlework related items, maybe some sewing. And I have some stitched items to show you today, a finish, a whip, some plans, a designer to highlight, a little bit of haul, and thinking about next year already. It's September, but I'm thinking about what I want to finish this year and what is on my agenda for next year. I really appreciate all the mid-year whip parades. I love them. I'm always here for a whip parade. I thought about doing one, but I think I'll wait until the traditional January 1st whip parade. So let's get going. What have I been working on? Well, I have a finish of the Stitching Parlor Persuasion. This I bought from the attic, Janine, not the attic, Acorns and Threads. Janine from Acorns and Threads uh, ordered it from the designer. She has multiple patterns that are related to Jane Austen. This is part of the Jane Austen Sal, hosted by Annie Bees. Um, Annie and her daughters started up this hashtag and I hardly jumped in and started working on this. This is a stitch on Winter White by Seraphim. It is mostly the called for threads. I had most of it done on my last video and I finished it. I substituted the water, the color dialogue. Uh, it was called for Tropical Ocean by General Arts and it was not the same at all. Like this is tropical ocean. <laughs> this is the color that's on the cover. So I changed it to blue suede and blue bonnet, I think from weeks because you've got the wake coming off of the, the ship. So we needed two colors there. And sometimes during the pattern, it called for this yellow. So all of the stamens on the flowers are yellow. And it looked, you could see it close up, but when you looked at it from a distance, they just melted into nothingness. So I did use the tropical ocean here. And uh, I talked more about that in the last video. Up here, I changed my initials LMS to the pink that's in the color uh, in the thread palette. And pretty much everything else is the same. I changed, this was yellow, I changed it to the tropical ocean color. So this was so much fun to stitch. I loved every minute of these flowers. Those tulips are just amazing. All right. So that was my finish. I am thinking about sending that off to be framed. We shall see. Next I worked on, let's see, where is the, I can't find all my things. Oh, here we go. It's a struggle. The struggle is real for floss tube. Getting your stuff organized is half the battle and then putting it away when you're done is the other half. And also starting the video. Like this is my second start because come on. Here is Summer Moon by Plum Street Samplers Paulette. Paulette is amazing at designing brick homes, brick houses. You, um, I can't resist them. I can't and but look at the stitching this is like a hade and so here is where I am I'm stitching this with some girlfriends now this is my um, Taylor Swift concert breakaway layered approach here to all of my things that I want to show you <laughs> so the first one here's summer moon I since I last uh, visited with you I stitched this whole section and the bottom I think I was like to about here I stitched all of this and I filled in that roof and then I started the moon. So really I just have fill in, fill in, fill in and a flag. And then I get to do this whole section here that has an urn and the, the rabbit sitting on it. So there's not a ton left. It's been such a pleasure to stitch. The color palette is scrumptious. I love this one. This is stitched on 40 count pecan butter by Lakeside. Now, I think a comparable color to this is Light Hazelnut by Extra Designs. 
and this is my favorite lakeside color so it's precious to me that is the other whip that i worked on so i had a finish and i had a whip i have a couple more so once i finish this i'm gonna stitch on summer moon until it's done and then the next thing i'm gonna work on is let's see if i can find this this is red wear it comes out of cross stitching this is the old jeremiah junction type patterns from the 80s and 90s and it's this one so this is a whip from 2018 and a lot of the whips that i'm trying to finish are from 2018 vintage um, i have a couple mirabellias that are older than that i don't know when i started them so i don't even have a date but I'm stitching one Marabellia a year. I'm trying to finish one a year. And I really only have maybe three left, I think. Three or four. So that's Red Wear. Um, I don't know if there's a designer outside of the publication. It doesn't say. And this is um, where I am. It is... When I stitched this, and I started stitching this the last time I picked it up, the DMC green is a different color. It's the same number, but the cut dye lot changed. I think I might just leave it because it's very kind of old and vintagey looking, sort of fractorish. Um, but I really just have a little bit here, uh, the R and the E, and then the red is over here. There's another motif, I think that's like this size, maybe a couple of these. There might be one this size, I can't recall. This is all solid stitching. There's a little bit of back stitching in there as well. But I think I was thinking about, um, finishing summer moon sal summer moon sorry by plum street and then what would i pick up next this is one of the two pieces that i have in uh, my what's up next plan the other one you'll recognize this autumn on lazy bear mountain so here's a story on this one this is kathy barrick and i mean it just it's all the fall and i do feel like we're getting into that fall time right so Today's supposed to be 86 with a chance of thunderstorms, which we don't really get thunderstorms much where I live. So it's probably going to be pretty muggy this afternoon. And this is my whip. I started this in 2018. I did like this section here. And then maybe another time I did one of these gals. And the last time I touched it, I started doing this border and this fence. But I haven't like spent a lot of dedicated time on it. This is Mossy by Hand Dye by Stephanie. I loved this fabric. I really wanted to stitch it on this. If I stitched it over two, um, I think, I can't remember if this is, this is an even weave. It might be a 32 count. It is a 32 count now that I think about it. Um, it was going to leave me with like a half an inch around the edge and that's not doable. So I decided to stitch it over one and I love the way it looks. Now, I don't know what I was thinking because there's plenty of fabric. I could have turned it and only stitched on half this fabric. So, but that ship sailed. I mean, we're just going to work on this and move forward on it. I think this, I'm stitching this in the DMCs. So I might pull some over dyed when it comes to working the trees and the leaves. I, I might have a couple of over dyeds that I pulled for that. So this and Red Wear are on my next to work on list. Yep. Also, it's Sampler September and Sampler September Soiree. So what do I think I might do? Well, I'm very conflicted. <laughs> I haven't decided if I'm actually going to start anything or not because my plan for the last few years has been to reduce my whips and I, I have three whips that I've started this year. Um, Mary Leah by Hands Across the Sea, which is the biggest whip I have outside of my Haid. Um, they're uh, the, oh, it's a Christmas one by Samplers Not Forgotten. I think it's Peace on Earth from the Country Sampler. That one is a whip. And then there's a third one. Um, I can't remember which one it is. So oh, summer moon, right? So summer moon will be done. I I don't think the others, I might work on peace on earth in December. I haven't decided yet. 
but most of my whips, I'm just trying to bring them more current. And my goal is like this year, I've started several things and finished them. And that's what I want to do. I want to start something like I started Summer Moon and worked on it with friends and I really focused on it. So really, you know, having a couple, two or three whips that I'm focusing on. And I think I just want to get to where I'm under 20 whips, kind of keeping it consistently under 20 and working the older stuff out. Um, and it's just, I guess I want to do that because I enjoy stitching on it. I, I like Mary Leah is a very good example. I just started it and that's all I've done. I haven't gotten back to it because I've been focusing on other, on other pieces. So I might get to the point where I, you know, like I think Olivia from pumpkin hollow quilts expressed this, that she got down to the bottom of her whip basket and she just didn't love all the things she was working on. It wasn't as fun anymore. So she started a whole bunch of stuff and, uh, how much fun is that to interject that into your, into your, um, whip pile. So those are, um, my plans. Now with sampler September, I have two, two potential starts. We'll see, because like I said, I I'm sure I'm just going to get working on this and want to keep working on it. And in the meantime, autumn on lazy bear mountain, I worked on every September and I only work out for a little bit because I want to work on the sampler that I picked to work on. But the first one is At Home by Brenda Gervais. Um, Chris from Little Bird Stitching, she just posted that she's been patiently waiting on Instagram to start this. And she just started it. And she thought it was the most beautiful sampler she's ever seen. And it is gorgeous. It is fantastically gorgeous. So that one, um, I have kitted up. I have the threads and all the good things. I have... I don't know. Let's see what kind of fabric is this. This is lentil, big side lentil. Sometimes lentil is pretty green and this is really not. This is pretty beige. The second one is Sister Sampler by Abby Rose Design. And it says, you know full well as I do the value of a sister's affections. There is nothing like it in the world. Charlotte Bronte. So the liter literary person in me just loves this sampler. And I have selected, well, first of all, I need to get a floss ring on these. <laughs> oh, please. All right. Here are the flosses. They're so pretty. There's some pinks in there, muted colors. And I have, I'm thinking about um, ballet slipper for this one which has got that kind of blush color to it. It would be very pretty. The picture I think is a little more beige, but I really sort of like the hint of pink on here. So those two could get started this year. We shall see. Uh, the next thing, so I just want to talk a little bit about a few things that I picked up. I ordered some fabrics through Tropical Stitches. I never bought any through them. This one is Contessa and it is um, a very pretty like light yellow, perfect spring stitching. So I've got that one. Um, I could also see primming that up a little bit, maybe doing a, a light coffee dye on it to knock the yellow down a little bit. I might try that with part of it. The other one I picked up is Ursula. This one is very pretty, great sampler fabric. So Tropical Stitches, um, I think they are, they might be an Etsy store. I'll link them below. My mom and I went to a local quilt store that's about 15 minutes away. That's a fantastic quilt store. I am so lucky to live close to this store. She had some kitten corn, um, what do they call these charm packs, I think, from last year. They have a new line this year. And it's very fall. It's got like, you know, candy corn. It's super cute. It's got a little bit of teal in it. Picked up two charm packs because I want to make some project bags. And this is going to be the outside, the front of the charm packs. Uh, and this will be the back and then the part that wraps around the top. And this will be the inside. So this should be fun. I'm looking forward to, um, I think I say this every video. I just really feel the urge to sew. And where I am now, it's a pretty small space. And we found that in our in the main part of the shop, where we have our stuff um, stored. We did a great job of consolidating it to one corner of the shop and stacking things up, but some of the boxes were just too heavy and they started to collapse. So I asked my husband to build a bin 
um, organization storage thing that I've seen on Instagram. I you probably all have seen it too. And he did. So there are 16 totes. Most of it, he said, can I have some of it for my hunting gear? I'm like, no, we'll see. <laughs> I have a lot of craft stuff, but I want to be able to go over, know what's in each bin and pull it out and be able to get to what I need to. And I think I might just sew out in the main shop area because there's a lot of room. It's pretty good light out there and I can open the door if I want to. I'll just have my cats running around. So I'll have to, you know, watch them. That is fun and exciting. And I'll probably be working on that tomorrow organization. And also I found more boxes of patterns. So this whole section here has to get reorganized. So I'll insert a picture right here of what that organization looks like. It's pretty fantastic. I can't wait to fill it up. Also at the quilt store, I bought this. This is Belle Isle by Minnick and Simpson. I love their fabrics. They're one of my favorite fabric designers. And that was that kind of an end of the bolt purchase. When I was looking, I can't remember where I saw this. Um, this is Friend of Gervais, uh, Mary's, Mary Valentine's handiwork. Now, there's another Valentine one that I have that's similar to this. And I can't remember where I saw it, but I went to eBay to see. I thought, well, maybe this is out of print and I can't get it. Somebody had it, like, it was like $100. And I thought, what the heck? So I went to Country Stitches online on Brenda's shop and it was available for the whatever the normal price is, retail price. I also picked up a couple of other things from her shop. Look at this. You guys, that punch needle is so stinking cute. This is called Tending the Tulips. Another punch needle called, um, I do not know what this is called. Oh, Strawberry Manor at Strawberry Hill. That's adorable. She has a cross stitch out of this too. And then Keeper of the Pins. Look at that. How adorable is that? And Trick or Treat Teddy. I didn't have any of those. So that's going in my stash. When I, um, I watch a channel, an Instagram channel called Vintage Blessings. And I've shown a couple quilts that I bought from them. I can quilt. So I just try to be careful because I have a ton of fabric and I probably just want to create my own quilts, but I saw this bag and it's so stinking cute. It's so, it's a, out of a cutter quilt. So sometimes quilts are just not repairable. They've lived their useful life as a quilt and they're reimagined into something else. And this is so adorable. And it was for the work that goes into this, it was very reasonably priced. So that, I love that. Love it, love it, love it. And then my mom and I, when we were out shopping, we went to a thrift store and I found this fun oval metal um, hoop and it has the cork on it. I don't know what the brand is. Does anybody know what this one is called? That has the, it's got the cork on the inside, but it's also got this like this screw edge, you know, like a little, looks like the, a ball pin hammer coil, ball pin hammer, a ball, a pen, a ball, a ball point pen, <laughs> not a ball pin hammer. You know how you open it up. It's got those little coils in it. That's what that is. So anyway, it's just for fun display. If nothing else, I might try using it, but I'm a little worried. It's not rusty at all. I just want to make sure that I, my, my uh, stitch piece doesn't get damaged at all. And there was a ultra punch with a needle threader and the, the needles it was like $4. So I got that because I have one, but I might loan that to my sister. Maybe we'll do some punch needle together too. I, last time I told you that I had bought a little mini sewing machine and have my cousin pick it up because it was about an hour and 20 minutes from where we live. And so she went over and picked it up for me and after the family reunion that we went to, I went, my husband and I went and visited her and her husband and I picked this up. It's so stinking cute, you guys. Now, this was like 20 bucks on Facebook Marketplace. If you go on to eBay and put miniature sewing machine in your stitch, in your search menu, 
there were a lot of these and some of them have like boxes like a sewing machine box or a little other accoutrement and um, I don't think this has a bobbin on it so I'm not sure that you could really use it but it's just for fun and for you know for dec decoration so that was a, a fun fantastic purchase check out eBay I bet you can find something that's pretty comparable that's not extremely expensive um, sometimes shipping though I'll be honest with you I bought it just bought an antique sampler and I'm having it shipped and the shipping was shocking <laughs> how expensive it was so oh it is what it is hey shout out to embroidery angel who made a little drawing of this Anne of Green Gables so adorable and made it into a needle minder I think I had it last time and I meant to say something and I forgot she is on Instagram and if you go to her Instagram page I think there's a link to her where you can buy these so if you're a big fan these are just it's so stinking cute now I have a couple things coming up one oh here's a couple of other things that I'm thinking about stitching in October a couple of mill hills and I've not done a mill hill yet I know that Colorado cross stitcher Sherry one of the prompts for summer school I didn't do it this year or last year I might do it next year we'll see is to do something that you haven't done before and I haven't done a mill hill kit and I've beaded things but I've not stitched on perforated paper either these are both adorable so that's a potential um here is a bag that I made in the past and I love it but I used to use a different interfacing than I do now so these don't have as much body to them and I'm thinking about deconstructing this one I can always use the scraps in some other projects and making this a pillow instead a pin pillow I just love this it's a blackbird designs and I think it's bittersweet September I'll put it on the bottom if it's a different it's a different name but this is a fun bag I really I love the colorway in it this pumpkin fabric the teak fabric is fantastic it just unzip it all the way great fabric I just end up with so many extra bags that I don't need and of course I want to keep the stitched piece on there this is a fun I guess this just had my Ottoman Lazy Bear Mountain in it this is a fun um, owl fabric that I quilted and then made it I need to get back to bag making okay so let's I just want to do some shout outs first check my list because today I did get organized and have a little bit of a list um, ba -ba -ba -ba. upcoming retreats I have two in October November and this has been a little bit slower year because of moving <laughs> selling our house moving not sure you know the unknowns so I had a retreat in the spring I have the farm girl retreat in in October I'm going to go early and meet some friends at country sampler and then we're going to the farm girl retreat Beth twist is the designer there so I'm excited to hang out with her and then in a couple weeks later or the next week I'm going to the attic for the autumn abundance retreat with Paulette from Plum Street and Alma from Blackbird so the last video I asked you to give me a shout if you're going to be at the retreat and several people messaged me or mentioned that they're going to be there and so I'm excited to see you please come by and say hi and uh, let's chat so it should be fun before I get to the designer that I want to highlight today I just want to give some shout outs of some of the, look at these costumes I've been watching so Shanda stitching in Idaho I never miss Shanda's videos she has just fantastic a variety of different types of uh, projects and I love that she has sort of um, her home up in the mountains and that's where her quilt studio is and then in this in the school year her husband's an auto shop teacher they live down kind of in a um, in town and they have a very quaint little house that they've restored and so her her videos are full of eye candy for me so Shanda stitching in Idaho I'll link everyone below in the Dropbox um, Lori mischievous stitches my friend Lori is back to making more floss tubes regularly and I love that 
Lori collaborates with people and has a lot of sales, but also she and her husband do a lot of antiquing and she finds great things. So there's always good things to watch on her channel. Karen Combs Studio. Karen is a quilt designer and she does a lot of sampler stitching as well. And I find um, she has a very great, uh, wonderful eye for color. So I um, really enjoy Karen's um, videos. Sorry, I'm, I'm trying to read my handwriting here. <laughs> uh, Molly and Kathy from Linens and Scraps. So what I love about their channel, first of all, they just did a little video of, of um, Kathy's house, like a part one video with all of her treasures in there. How fun was that? Really enjoyed it. And then their the relationship they have is so much fun to watch on on um, on floss tube. It's harder to do a video with one person, I think. It's not you don't have the chemistry that comes from talking and the conversation that, that occurs when you have two people, but I appreciate all floss tubers, whether you're solo like me or you're a duo or a trio. I just love floss tube. Uh, Katie is so tattered and Olivia pumpkin hollow just made me buy some of that cheddar and coal tube fabric. I was, I had it in my cart and I thought, no, nope, I'm going to wait. And then Olivia talked me into it today. So I ordered some of that. In fact, there's a couple of kits that I would love to have too, but I just ordered some, um, fabric instead. Carol salt box stitcher. I just never miss Carol's videos. She is my number one sampler inspiration. I think she, the, she and Brenda and Laura from, uh, Brendan, the serial starter. I just, all of the, it's not just the current designs, but some of the classic designs too. I really enjoy all watching when they bring the older designs out and what they're stitching on today. And then the last one is uh, Rosanna from Nesta Petals. So she also is, um, does hand embroidery and sells it. She has her own website, I think. And, uh, she's her mom stitches or her mom got her into making floss tube videos. So she's um, got two, I think out now. And I believe she has other videos that are not related to stitching or uh, related to cross stitch anyway. So she's, I recommend watching her. Okay. So when you think about fall stitching, when I think about fall stitching, there are certain designers that come to mind and probably the number one designer that comes to mind for me is Kathy Barrick and Marty Barrick, those two together, whether it's Kathy's designs that were um, purchased by Marty or Marty's current designs or Kathy's current designs. I just think that the primitive nature of her, of their patterns really lend themselves to be more of a fall feel. So I thought I would pull out uh, a bunch of those. Why not, right? Why not talk about that? Um, so some of them are fall, some of them are some of them aren't as fall. But I really love this one. <laughs> I looked at this. I thought, talk on. I would love to start this one. And I think this first came out like in a magazine. You could order a kit. It was I've never seen it before. It might have been country country sampler magazine, country living magazine. And I can't remember if I bought it through them. I didn't really want the kit at that time, but this is, I might start this one. It's, it's a small one. It is 108 by 116, right? That is, that would go lickety split fast. And you could probably make it pretty small and make a pillow out of it or a little wall hanging, hang it, you know, pin it on one of those, um, display like, Rod iron little garden gates. That would be really cute. In fact, I wonder where that is. I'm not even shocked. Hmm. My mind's spinning. So this is something that I might start soon. Also, I've been thinking about this one forever and a day. The ocean blue stocking. So I do love all the stockings that they do. I, um, I think I have fabric that will work for this. I just need to find it. And I think sort of like this reminds me of some of the Paulette stuff that she does for, for that's nautical. Sorry, floss too bitchy nose, but I definitely have this one on my radar. I might start this one like January 1st. And what I love about this is you can kind of just stitch bands 
and not um, not get stuck on tons of fill in. Lots of variety there. And so there is. I'm gonna skip these and come back to that in a minute. This one. I bought this one so fast and I thought, shoot, I'm going to go ahead and stitch that. Well, I haven't started it yet, but wouldn't that be fun? This could be a great, you know, November, December stitch. Maybe I'll start that one. I'm going to blow my plans up, aren't I? The Gingham Dog and the Calico Cat. So even though this is summer, doesn't it? It's got the golds in it and the greens and the reds and it sort of, to me, seems fallish. The gingham cat and the the gingham dog and the calico cat side by side on the table sat. Twas half past twelve, and what do you think? Neither one had slept a wink. Isn't that the truth? This one, I love this one. So Halloween stocking by Kathy Barrick. Now, I don't know that you have to make this a stocking. Wouldn't it be cute just to stitch her this this section here? In fact, you could do something where you just drop her down and put a spool and maybe scissors and duplicate it on either side of her and make a little pillow or just stitch her. So cute. I love this one. Swan Garden. I think I was looking for fabric for this and I got waylaid. But to me, there's it's like a tapestry, isn't it? So beautiful. Uh, bearing gifts. This is my tall girl sampler. <laughs> Look at that strawberry. I love this. The proportions that Kathy has on hers are fantastic. Reindeer feed sack. Now I think there's like three or four of these feed sack type patterns. And I want to say, I thought, oh, I even picked out some red. I wonder what I picked out. Louisiana hot sauce. I love Louisiana hot sauce. Uh, hearts and flowers. Now this would be a darling needle book, wouldn't it? Would be pretty easy to make as well. Yep. So I do love this one, Agnes Rollinson. I think I bought this in the clearance rack at Country Sampler. I don't love the saying on it, and I might just stitch this with the girls. That also would be an adorable needle book. If you hear a noise, it's my husband out in the shop. He's cleaning up because we have the uh, people were coming over tonight to the barbecue and play cards. Um, strawberry blossoms. This one, <laughs> the hair. I love the hair because it's real world girly, curly hair uh, girl problems. Strawberry blossoms, one and all. There are ever so many. Look at all the flowers. They are so small, though fair as any. So cute. Hopeful. This is Carriage House. I think I might change the colors on this one. So this is Good Intent Farm, and there's Mount Misery Road, Dismal Hollow Road, and Two Sheep Farm. I'm not sure. I might rename that and just do some different colors, but I love the pastoral scene. Uh, JL's Moth, uh, HL's Moth. Okay, so I've got the chain for this. I think you can make this like a necklace. I bought it. I'm like, why wouldn't I make a necklace out of this? My, my family will really think I'm crazy if I show up with a cross-stitch necklace. Miss Lila's house. I love this stitched on the black. That color, this is, these are my colors right here. Green, red, pink, black. Yep. Karen Combs just finished and um, framed this. She showed it on her last video. I love this one. And then Quaker Street by Marjorie Massey is another whip that I'm thinking about pulling in and working on. So it sort of makes me think about that whip that I already have going. But boy, I would love to start that one. Lots of people have done this one. Heaven and Nature Sing by Kathy. Beautiful, beautiful. And here's the follow-up to it. Uh, Deary and Darling. And then Repeat the Sounding Joy. All of these are in that same vein, that Christmas hymnal. I love this one. 
Isn't that magnificent? I mean, how do you even think about this, designing that? So beautiful. A fun little one, a, a diminutive Dutch sampler. I'll come closer for that one so you can see it. I do love these. Here come the stockings, Quaker stocking. I think Vonna showed that in one of her videos. Uh, sampler stocking. Love this one. I love this one. A virtuous woman stocking. I love this one. I think I would change the yellow lettering. That was something else, but mm, gorgeous. And then this one I think might be my favorite. Truth and virtue stocking. Look at that house. Right in the middle of it. Love it. Americana. You, I love Kathy Barrick, let me tell you, and Carriage House, both of them. That's Americana. And then Blooming Basket. Oh, that's so pretty. That's Fall in a Basket right there. Wash Day by Carriage House. Big Brown House by Carriage House. That's adorable, isn't it? could totally change the colors on this. Uh, the Farmer's Wife, I love. Another one that I love on black. This one, Carriage House. I want to talk a little bit about my whips, my whip plans. Gorgeous. Look at that. Oh, this would look fantastic next to your Cheddar and Cole quilts, girls. And then this one, October 31st. See what I mean? Last, okay, here's a plan that I have for next year. Um, well, first of all, Christmas at Hawk Run Hollow. I love this, although I would probably change these people. They look like they're um, out of Tim Burton's movies. I might do a little change there. The um, the Shores of Hawker and Hollow. Lots of people have stitched this one. Again, gorgeous. You know, you don't have to stitch the whole thing. Like, you could stitch one and make a pillow or, or frame it. Um, a year at Hawker and Hollow. The Houses of Hawker and Hollow. All the hollows, right? And then here's my plan for next year. I'm going to stitch Autumn at Hawker and Hollow. If you watched my last video, you saw a big yellow frame that I bought. And if I stitch three across and five high, that will um, leave me a place to design, to pull this down and maybe do a different kind of a um, custom design for the top and should fit very nicely in that frame. So I need to figure out which ones to rearrange and I'll pull a couple from maybe this one. Halloween at Hawkrun Hollow or one of the houses at Hawkrun Hollow. So that's on my list for next year. Also next year um, of my whips, I had kind of put together the ones I think I'm going to focus on. So this year I'm going to finish with Summer Moon, Red Wear, Autumn on Lazy Bear Mountain, and then Quaker Street. I think I'm going to introduce that one. If I have time, I'll go pull the Christmas one. I'm sure I'll feel like stitching Christmas. I will pick up um, peace on earth sampler. And then the ones out of my whips that I want to focus on next year are let freedom ring by Abby Rose needlework clusters, stars club kit from blackbird designs. That's now in a book, um, prize your Liberty by Marilee beans. That is available through, um, Oh, what's her name? 1884 stitchery. And then Leeds House Sampler by Rosewood Manor. Um, if I don't get, if, if I work on Quaker Street, depending on where I leave off, I might work on that next year. Florentina is the Mirabilia I'm going to focus on finishing. Um, Susan Rambo. So I have three or four extra large ones. I have them categorized. I have about 40 whips right now. So the, there are, um, the four that are the bigger ones are Susan Rambo, Susan Milne, or Milne by Hands Across the Sea, the Rosary Sampler, which is a crowd favorite. I've showed that one. People love it. And then if I 
carry over Audubon Lazy Bear Mountain. That one will be a focus as well. And then the last one is uh, Jane Summers' work, 1831 by Shakespeare's Peddler. I started that with my friend Lori Wilson from Thread Milk Designs, and I just didn't get very far on it. So I'm looking forward to spending more time on that one. That should clean me up. That will get me closer to being in the 20s, which is kind of where I will, uh, where I want to be. 20s, I'd like to get down to 20, but this year, clearly that's not going to happen this year because I still have 40 whips. Sorry, I knocked you guys. Um, so that's, that's the plan kind of coming up for the rest of this year. Now, those plans could change. I could throw it out the wall, out the window, not the wall, throw it out the window. And so I always reserve the right to make changes, but that's kind of where my head is right now. Uh, I hope that everyone has a great weekend. Thank you for visiting. I appreciate all the comments. Um, really, I want to sell all the things with everyone, but quite frankly, I'm just trying to get my whips down. I'm still holding to that plan. My highest whip count at one point was 79. So my goal is to every year, I'm just chunking that down and they're big. Like I have a lot of big whips. They're not, all the smalls are pretty much stitched. <laughs> Everything else is got some heft to it. So I hope you have a great weekend and we'll probably see you in a couple of weeks. Take care.